Now I'm also trying to think of how to tackle this next situation. This this level in particular very much relies on the speed aspect. You're going to have a lot of timers and things. Um, so you're going to be flying around under a time limit. You're going to be, you know, sprinting around under a time limit. Stuff like that. Um, I suppose I could show this off before we go ahead and do it. So when you stand on this switch, it's going to open up the, f the top of this pyramid. But if you try and run normally, there's no way you're going to make it in time. And I know for a fact I'm not going to make it right now. What I'm trying to do is just collect the stuff on the way. Because this timer is, like, really annoying. It just barely gives you enough time to make it all the way to the top. And so, therefore, you're going to really have to cut corners, like, do something like that, you know, to speed up your process. So, any kind of shortcut you can take is very helpful. Also, a life, that's nice. And you're going to have to wear the speedy shoes, too. So, collecting notes while wearing the speedy shoes, you know, is pretty much out of the question, because you're going to be cutting corners like crazy. That's some nice alliteration on my part as well. Alright, so let's see if we can do this first try. I'm about to fall off the edge, aren't I? Go! be like really quiet because I'm like concentrating. So as you can see right there I tried to speed it up just a bit by cutting that corner. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Oh, maybe I am. I did. There you go. Also very important about this room, do not swim underwater just yet because if you start swimming too far you will lower the water and uh, you'll never be able to get that Mumbo token. True, true story, you will never be able to get that Mumbo token if you go for this Jiggy first. It's uh, one of those rare ones in the game that it doesn't let you go back and get it. Drink a Coke while we watch this cutscene. And we also fill the moat, that empty moat full of uh, quicksand, out in the middle of the area. And I don't know what is up with, like, this glitchy black part. I'm not even quite sure what it's supposed to be, but it's always like that whenever I drink it. Get out of here. I'm just gonna pick up a few collectibles, and then we can be on our merry frickin' way. Oh, that was close. Narrowly escaped with that encounter. Um, so let's see, what should we do next? I think we should go down and collect these notes around the moat. What do I want to do? Let's see, what's up here? Aha! Yeah, let's do this. Which also means we gotta pick up these notes. Notes upon notes upon notes. There's lots of notes in the overworld on this level. Lots of notes in general on every level. There's a hundred of them. What am I talking about? And before we... You know, I don't think we can go in... No, we can't go in here. We have to... We're gonna have to press that button, and then we can go in. But you can hear that Jinjo whistle, and there he is. He's on the back side of this pyramid. Pretty easy to get to, and I think this is our first honeycomb piece. You press it, it's not on the time limit. It just appears inside of that cactus. He's very difficult to fly through and not get hurt. Um... Requires a bit of practice, and I'm probably going to screw it up anyway, because I suck at video games. And frankly, I don't remember where the... Oh, I do remember the last honeycomb piece is, but it's spoilers, so I can't t I can't tell you yet. Alright. Carpet's going to disappear, and then reappear. We can step on it as it reappears, and then we can be taken on a bit of a voyage, if you will. And we have uh, Camel here. What's up, Camel Boy? It's too hot. For Gobi, I need some shade. Please, please help him. And I keep burping. I love that. Like, whenever something important happens, I have to, like, burp randomly. So he's so happy that he shakes the ground, farts, and a jiggy comes. I don't know about the farting thing. I don't know where that came from, but, uh... At least he just shakes the ground and the jiggy comes. At least we get a jiggy out of it. And I'm gonna... Play it safe and wait for the carpet. Why not? Whatever. I got time. In any case, what is the next thing? Oh, we, uh, we have to go press the thing on top of this pyramid. Duh, I already forgot that. Oh, we have to slam this one. Okay, it's not one that, like, automatically activates. 
You can always get like halfway down this pyramid before the uh, cutscene even takes over. So you have you'll have plenty of time. But now we are treated to something really annoying. Also, the only way to kill those guys is via invincibility feathers. We're gonna be playing a bit of tile matching. I'm sure you all played a tile matching mini game in a video game before. Um, I can't remember if this is random or preset. Um, but you know, I'm doing it at random, so obviously I'm gonna get something wrong. Feather. Which one was? This? Is this feather? No. This was feather. They give you tons of time, so there, there's there's no issue with this. Why did I press it? Oh, that's the no, metal. Okay. So there's that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is like preset. Like, is Kazooie up here? No, that's yellow ginger. There's banjo. I'm almost sure these are preset. But I just, you know, I've just never taken the time to remember it. Are these two next to each other? No. Oh, these two are next to each other. That's right. Wow, I actually got that right. That was right. But, you know, as you can see, I'm guessing checking like half of this stuff, and I'm still getting it right, so. And there we go, we're pretty much done. There's only two ties left. And that's all she wrote. And we get a jiggy for it, so that's pretty nice. Easy mini game for an easy jiggy. Cutscene, take a drink of coke. <clears throat> now let's get out of this pyramid. It's gonna close behind us, who cares? We don't have to go back in there for anything. <sighs> I suppose the next thing we should take care of would be, uh... The center area, which we have not visited yet. Haven't really touched most of it. But before we do, I think we should swim down and collect some of these things on the bottom. Before we, you know, get too distracted. I'd probably forget these if I hadn't thought of collecting them right now. Just some notes and nothing special. And you might be wondering, you know, why they're... Frick. Why are there flying pads on the bottom of the, uh, on the bottom of the water here? Can I get this? Thank you. But, yeah, before this was filled with the water, which we did from, uh, you know, we filled it with water manually, so, um, before it was filled with water, if you fell down here, there, if, if there weren't flying pads, you would be trapped and you'd be basically stuck, so they put flying pads in there just to help. And they still stay there when the water appears, so, if that, if that was kind of confusing to you. I only got one in, really? Dang it! There we go. I don't know I can get, like, all three in right at the same time. I'm just not good enough anymore. I'm not good enough. I need to be better. <sighs> Moving along, after my crazy rant, let me see if I can get all three in. Damn it! I can get two in for sure. There we go. Same thing happens, pyramid raises a little bit higher. Nothing special. Oh, you know what I saw uh, as an indie game on the Xbox Live Marketplace? It was, and my rumble, my rumble pack reminded me of this, uh, they have a rumble massager, like, application that you can buy for a dollar. And you just, like, put the Xbox remote on your pack and it's supposed to, like, give you a massage. And it just, like, with varying degrees of the rumble pack, it's... It's stupid. It's like one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. If you ever, if you ever just like want something fun to do and you're really bored on Xbox, like you're waiting for your friends to get online to go play some Call of Duty with them or something like that, just browse through the indie games. They are worth quite a few chuckles. Glitchy surface texture right there. That's nice. Um, be sure you collect these notes, and most importantly, on the top of the pyramid. Is perch that mumbo token that I was talking about. I said I would get later. There we go. If I can actually get it. Alright, so let's go in the front of the pyramid. This King Sandy Butt's tomb. Turn back or face a Sandy Butt. Alright, so if we walk in a little bit further, we'll see that the door closes behind us. And he says, 
chose not to heed his words. Of course we didn't, because if we did, that would just be lame and stupid. I think I'm taking the right way. Yeah, I yeah. am. Okay. So there's two ways you have to go. First way, you have to go over here, because secretly hidden is the grunty switch. They give you plenty of time to do this as well. You'll be able to explore the entire thing. There are no notes inside this place, otherwise that would be a dick move to make you collect the notes in a limited amount of time. That would just be a pain in the royal patooter, if you know. But now we're out of here and we're all safe, it's all good. You will die, actually, if you stay in there for the entire time. So King Sandy Butt's gonna give us his reward, which is a jiggy, of course. What else did you expect it to be? Gulp is right, yet again, taking a drink of that coke. Alright, so we have an invisibility feather, I'll take that. Ayo, ten of them. Also, I think in here... Yeah, in every single one of these, there's something important. But most importantly in here is the Jinjo, and that's the last Jinjo for us. That's gonna do us. That's gonna do... Whatever, that's gonna complete the Jinjos. I don't know what I was trying to say there. It's nine Jiggies, what's the last one? Oh, yes, I remember, of course. But, of course. And how many notes do we have, per chance? 87? 87 notes. Ah, yes, okay, I think, I do believe we are on exactly the right track at this moment. Um, I mean, I'm crossing my fingers, that's correct. Alright, so we see that Gobi has actually moved on over here now. Um, uh, yeah. This tree looks a bit thirsty, but I need all the water. Oh, I need all my water for myself. Why well, doesn't that seem kind of selfish? Trucker wants rain! I'm shriveling up! Oh, wait, he's just gonna say the same thing. He's gonna say he needs water. So, the obvious solution to everything is just a slam on it. He's gonna spit up his water into Trunker, which is kind of disgusting, if you ask me. And, uh, Gobi is somehow Jesus and walks on water over there, in case you didn't see that in the background. And he's gonna run away. But just remember that Gobi is still here, and don't be too distracted by the Jiggy appearance, because we're gonna have to go talk to Gobi again in a little bit. He's gonna be pretty much the last thing we do in this level. So that is the tenth Jiggy. It's gonna play our little victory music. Almost done with Gobi's Valley. We just need notes and the last honeycomb piece. And I'm thinking you can guess who we're gonna get the last honeycomb piece from. Seeing as we there's only one person left in this level. Okay, MLG. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Now let's cross our fingers we're on the right track for notes, because if we're not, then we're screwed. To 93, 94, 95. I think that's right. I sure hope it's right. I'm just hoping I didn't miss one note somewhere. I will pound my own brains out if I did. Now you can either wait for this uh, magic carpet to come and get you right here, or you can take a flying pad. I'm just going to take the magic carpet because it's right here. Easy. Simple, quick, you know, no big deal. But it's going to take us all the way up over here, and it is the correct number of notes. So I don't know if Gobi's going to say anything else, but we're going to slam on him anyway, just because just because we're mean people. And he's going to spit, spit out the second honeycomb piece. So he's going to say he's leaving the desert place to find somewhere quiet. So he hops himself on out of here, and then we have that second to last honeycomb piece. Did I miss a honeycomb piece somewhere? Oh, I didn't pick up the uh, the one in the cactus, duh. We can just do that quickly. It's no big deal. It's hardly even an issue. I just fly up from this place. Just hope it doesn't give me too much trouble. Just flying through that cactus, like I said, is kind of a kind of a pooper. All right, last thing we're gonna do to level. Let's go. Flying over there quickly. Hey, I don't know if you guys know this, but in... I don't know if it's on Banjo 2 for the N64, but it's certainly on the Xbox Live Arcade version. I double-checked this. There's, like, this really weird glitch where you can, uh... 
in Banjo Tooie, if you um, move the directional pad as you do your beak bomb, for some weird reason, you can still like move like uh, uh, like laterally and vertically while you're beak busting. So technically, you can actually gain more height from doing the beak buster than just pressing A and like flapping up. So it's like you can. I don't know. It's difficult to explain, but if you own the Xbox Live Arcade version of Banjo Tooie, I know for sure it works on that. It, it's such a strange glitch, but when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about, and it's kind of cool. Anyway, so we're gonna leave Gobi's Valley. Um, and where did we make? I don't remember where we made the. Oh, we made the Jiggy appear up there. Okay, that's right. I forgot where we made it appear. So all you have to do is just, when that thing comes around, just make sure you uh, jump off the pad and that that's all she wrote, nothing really special. So we have seven Jiggies in uh, Grunty's Lair now. Seven of those, so let's scroll on over to Mum or, pff, Mumbo's Mountain. Gobi's Valley, 100 out of 100, 10 out of 10, 2 out of 2 in less than 30 minutes. Perfect. So I think I will end it off here and in the next two parts, we will tackle the next epi- or the next episode. We'll tackle the next world. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all later.